I've wanted to get a fence for a few years now and I wanted an aluminum fence and I decided this was the year to finally get one put in. So I spent a little bit of time looking at some local companies who would install it, also just looking at buying the materials locally and I wasn't super excited with where the prices were coming in. So I reached out to Aluminum Fences Direct and I sent them the dimensions of my yard, sent them a drawing and they were able to get me a really reasonable quote that was about half the price of anything I was able to find locally. Now they did provide the materials at an additional discount for me for the purposes of being able to make this video, but they've not seen this content. They have no input at all. I'm just reviewing my experience of working with the fence and installing it as a DIYer with no experience in fencing. So I hope this video is able to help you decide if you're gonna be able to get one of their fences for yourself. From the first email to Aluminum Fences Direct, they were very helpful. They gave me all the materials and a list that I needed, and they were able to come up with a good layout for me in terms of both the gates that were gonna be needed, all the posts, all the different parts and hardware that I was gonna to need to get the job done. And when I finally went through, buying it was really easy. And the fence arrived in just over a week. They had a really fast turnaround time. It was delivered freight and it came on a couple pallets. When I took everything off the pallets, it was all packed super well, saran wrapped together. And there's these little spacers that kept all the fences from scuffing up against each other. I bought the magnetic latches. I really like them because they automatically lock the door whenever it shuts. And the hinges are even spring loaded too. So they make sure the gate always closes. I ended up picking out the four foot tall by six foot wide, three rail Sierra panels. They do have several other designs that you can pick from on their website as well. And there's different levels of fencing available from residential all the way up to commercial. So you can get on their site and look at all the different designs they have. But I just went with the classic three rail that you see behind me. So they're gonna put every single hinge, latch, drop hinge, gate, post, panel, all of that is gonna go on your order. You get everything except the concrete and the tools that you need to install it. I did enlist the help of my father-in-law to do this project so he could help me drill the holes, plan the layout, and set everything up. And you definitely need to have at least two people to do this job so that you have a set of extra eyes and extra hands to make sure everything's lining up straight and working out well. You also are gonna need one bag of concrete per every post. So you can look at your parts list and you can see how many posts you have total and then just get one 50 pound bag of concrete per post and then maybe a couple extra bags just in case as well. I ended up using a couple of extra bags of concrete at the end to just fill up a little bit more on the gate post, but more about that in a little bit. There were several tools that were really helpful in getting this project done. You're gonna want some nice shovels, both flat and pointed. You're gonna want post hole diggers. You're gonna want some sort of auger that's machine operated and not a handheld auger. We'll get into more about that in a minute as well. Rakes also come in handy for getting things out of the way. A tamp bar is super useful for pounding your concrete down and getting it to all settle really well. I also bought these really nice fence post levels and you're gonna want some longer levels as well, as well as a bunch of scrap wood that you can use as spacer blocks and also just blocks to help you pound on the different parts whenever you're installing them. You're also gonna want an impact driver with a hex bit that can work with the self-tapping screws that they give you. I also found that having a rubber mallet and a sledgehammer was really handy for being able to drive the posts in a little bit deeper. You're also gonna want a jigsaw with an aluminum cutting blade because whenever you get to the end of a run, you are going to need to be able to cut your panels shorter to be able to fit them. You'll also have to make a notch on them as well. I found that the best way to make the notch and to mark everything off was to put some green painter's tape on it and mark it out with a pin or a Sharpie and then to use that jigsaw to just cut around it. I put all my favorite tools and the other things that I found useful in the description below. All you're gonna need is tools and concrete. So when you go to install, the first thing you're going to need to do is you'll need to plan out your layout. I recommend finding all your lot lines. I had a survey guy come, make sure that all my stakes were in the right spot. And then we came in on the lot lines by about a foot just to make sure that we were for sure on our property lines. I used a string line to mark out both my property line and the fence line. So that was nice to have as a reference as we went around. You also might wanna have your layout drawing handy too so you can know where all of your different gates are gonna go. Make sure you pay attention to the direction the gates are gonna swing. Another thing you're gonna to want to pay attention to is there's four different types of posts. There's line posts, end posts, gate posts, and there's corner posts. Line posts, the holes are just straight across from each other. Corner posts are at a 90 degree angle. End posts, there's just one set of holes. And gate posts, there's one set of holes, but you can tell they're a heavier duty post. That way it can handle the weight of the gate being hung on it and slamming against it every time it shuts. Another recommendation on the gates is don't hang the gates the same day. That way your concrete can be hardened a little bit more and be in good shape for you. 
once you get your layout mark to start, just pick a corner and you go from there. And you wanna make sure that post hole is about four to eight inches wide. So this is my first recommendation. Make sure you have a really good auger and look at how many holes you're gonna be putting in. We had this really tough clay soil and we ended up getting a steel handheld auger. And this ended up not being as durable as I would have liked it to be for the task. Digging each hole ended up being very hard because of the soil type we have here. If you've got a harder soil type, you might wanna look into getting a mini skid steer with an auger attachment, but try to keep it between that four to eight inches because that's gonna make you need to use less concrete. I recommend dry packing the concrete. We didn't end up putting water in the holes until we had had several different posts set and we were really happy with the way they were plumbed and straightened up with the rest of the fence panels. So I found it was just a little bit easier to work with dry concrete because then you can adjust your posts and level it out as you go. Another thing you wanna pay attention to whenever you put your panels in, you get the self-tapping screws. I recommend wearing safety goggles because you will see little aluminum shards flying everywhere. Definitely wear the safety goggles. I forgot to put them on a couple times and always wish that I was wearing them in those moments. Another thing you wanna pay attention to is your frost line. So you need to make sure you know how deep the frost line is where you live. And if your frost line is at 24 inches, it's ideal to go a little bit deeper. You can even fill the bottom of the hole with a little bit of gravel or extra concrete just to keep the posts from being able to heave. When you go to put the panels in, you also want to leave a two to three inch gap underneath them so that it makes weed eating a little bit easier. We tended to lean more towards an inch and a half, and I wish we would have jacked it up a little bit higher. I found that would make it a little bit easier to weed eat. And also just be disciplined with watching your elevation as you go as well, because my yard, we figured out it is not straight or square at all. It just goes up and down in every direction. So you wanna pay attention to the way that your yard is going, so you're able to gradually go up or down a slope or incline instead of getting to the end of a run and all of a sudden you need to adjust the height of the post quite a bit. One really nice thing about the panels is they actually can be racked very easily. They're loose enough that you can just shift them and put them at whatever angle you need to do. I recommend racking the panels before you screw them into the post, but you can adjust the angle after the fact as well, as long as you don't sink all three screws in each post. So we tended to drill about two, three holes ahead. And when you're drilling your line posts, depending on the size of the material, our hole sizes need to be 72 and a half inches apart, center to center. And then for the gate openings, we actually needed them to be right on with what the gate was set to be. So if your gate is set at four foot, that means you need to have four feet in between the posts. So we had to pay really close attention when we were setting those posts for the gates. And you also wanna make sure that the opening is the same at the bottom and the top, that they're squared up, and that one gate post is directly in line with the other. Otherwise, you can have some issues when you're aligning everything later on. And we were able to get those to work pretty well, although one piece of advice I do have is really make sure that you're paying attention to how plumb your posts are. We didn't always do the best job at making sure all our posts lined up perfectly, and I noticed after we had set the concrete, some of them were a little off and it was too late to adjust them. So once your concrete dries, you're gonna be stuck with exactly how they sit but you do have a little bit of time in the curing process before they will be completely set. So overall, the installation was just a very repetitive task. Most of the video footage I got of it was just us drilling holes and screwing the panels in and just adjusting the alignment as we go. My recommendation is make sure you have help and make sure you have plenty of time. The biggest issue that we ran into is we planned around our availability. We didn't plan around the weather, so we ended up having some really cold, windy, breezy days that even added some rain into the mix. We started the very first thing in the morning, so it was very cold to start off. And I just wish that we would have waited a little bit longer to get into a better season to actually put the fence in. Make sure you're looking ahead and checking the weather because if your weather is less than ideal, it's just gonna make the whole process a little bit more challenging. Another issue we ran into is I was originally gonna get a mini skid with an auger. I ended up just using a handheld auger and we ran into dirt that we were not prepared to be facing. We have this really hard clay soil here and every single hole took anywhere from five to 10 minutes to dig out. So we were just going back and forth using the auger. It was getting stuck. We were trying to get it unstuck. We were manually digging part of it. It was just really hard. So make sure before you get started with the project, you've either tested out the auger you're gonna be using, or you just buy one that's a little bit heavier duty than you think you're gonna need. So they make a couple of other different kinds that you don't actually hold, but definitely plan on renting an auger and invest in that because that's gonna make your life a lot easier. Also make sure you get the right size bit on it too. You don't want a 12 or 14 inch bit, you wanna get a four, six or eight inch bit 
And honestly, the six inch bit would probably be the preferred one because that's gonna allow you to not use as much concrete and have a tighter fit for your fence post. Whenever I went to put the end post by the house, we immediately hit concrete and I didn't have the correct tool to break up the concrete. So we ended up using some of the extra angle brackets that we had to drill directly into the house, which isn't ideal, but it's okay. But just be aware that you might end up hitting concrete when you get close to your house, then you're not gonna be able to use an end post to finish the project up. So for every hole, whenever we went to put the post in, we got the post leveled out and about where we wanted. One of us dumped the concrete in dry and then we used the tamp bar as we leveled the post out. And then we would put the next panel in. The self-tapping screws are super easy to use. They work so great whenever you have the impact driver with the correct bit on it. So now I wanna talk about aluminum fences direct a little bit. I actually really appreciated them because I had a couple small questions come up when I was doing my install. Whenever I sent them an email, they got back to me very quickly. And anytime I talked to them on the phone as well, they were just super polite, super helpful, and they wanted to answer any questions I had. So I was very happy with the customer service that Aluminum Fences Direct provided. They also kept me up to date the whole way throughout the purchasing and shipping process to make sure I had all the info that I needed to get started. And they send you a whole PDF guide as well. I recommend printing it out, putting it in a binder because it's really handy to have that on hand as well. So overall, I'm really happy with the fence. I love how it turned out. It did take us about three days total to get the job done. And I think that I was a little bit overzealous. I originally thought it would take two days, but after the equipment was slowing us down and the weather was slowing us down, I quickly realized it was gonna take closer to three or four days to get the whole project done. So my first bit of advice is make sure that you're prepared to spend a little longer than you think. Know the soil that you're gonna be working with and also know the equipment as well. Make sure you have all the different tools, shovels, hammers, mallets that you think you might need and have those out and ready to go before you get started as well. Another thing I did is I moved all the concrete bags to our backyard before we did the install a couple days before that. That way the whole day I wasn't carrying them from the front yard to the backyard. I also recommend unless you have a heavy duty truck, you might just look into having a local company deliver all the concrete bags for you because that's gonna be a lot easier than getting multiple loads in a truck and trailer because those do add up really fast in terms of weight and load. Another thing I was thankful for, the bid that Aluminum Fences Direct gave me was about half the cost of what it was gonna to cost to buy all the materials locally and even cheaper than if I would pay someone else to put it in. So the project was a lot of hard work and it definitely was a challenge in ways that I didn't expect it to be. But now that the fence is done, I'm honestly really happy with how it turns out. And I have a lot of pride in the fact that my father-in-law and I were able to complete our own really nice looking fence. I've been getting a lot of compliments on how it looks from the street. And we just love having a fenced in yard now. It's so nice to have. And I was just super thankful for how Aluminum Fences Direct took care of me through the whole process. Anytime I had a question or emailed them, they answered me very quickly answer any questions I had, and they also were willing to have dialogue as well. If I needed to clarify things, they were always sure to ask me the right questions. So my recommendation, if you wanna put one of these fences in, is go for it. Just make sure you do your homework beforehand. Make sure you have all the correct tools, enough concrete, and some good weather so you can put your fencing in, because you're gonna take a lot of pride in the process and the finished product. If you have any other questions about this fence installation, leave a comment down below. I'll do my best to answer them. Like this video, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming content. And be sure to check out aluminumfencesdirect.net so you can buy your aluminum fence.